my case study. I think I have already presented it to bit yesterday in the other context. But so basically, I don't know if uh, just a brief because it's always good to understand. I represent roughly the owner of this of this bridge is Brisbane from Portugal. Then the Zero Bridge case study, many three components of the already <coughs> Done a lot of work, so the system monitoring, the structure in terms of performance, and the structural performance that was already uh, done. And then what else? The current, uh, mainly the last parts of the application of the, internet, of the integrated value information analysis for <coughs> is being used. So basically, the Bereza Group is the one of the largest tools, not Brazil, Brazil world. So we have investments not only in Portugal but also in the United States and in the Netherlands. Um, in Portugal, we have, they have all already seen the ACGM as a strategic investment, so they have some bridges with uh, monitoring systems, mainly two with permanent monitoring systems near of this one. And the one that I focus on, I've chosen for this case study, is the Zero Bridge, which is the second big one bridge in Europe. It has a monitoring system that is permanent, it has data system construction, uh, so the size of the system is quite complex. It measures different parameters. Static dynamic behavior is observed. So uh, this is a project that is ongoing and the reason they want to develop further and include this in the asset management procedures for this bridge. So basically, uh, briefly, what I have to offer for this case study as the value information a part of all this information from the monetary system that we collect in the last 11 years, we have also available a very detailed model that includes uh, uh, not only the concrete elements but the reinforcements embedded, pressure stress, uh, the external tendons, the construction sequence as well with very, very detail. Uh, <coughs> all possible information that was available is included in the model. So what we could at least try to, from the point of view of the owner, in the first step to show them that this data is valuable and they can rely on, because normally they rely more in the predictions from the designer of the grid, but we were able to show that for this case with the model that we showed with the locket. Uh, in fact, there was a good agreement between the data and the model. Uh, okay, this is a small animation just to understand that the model is quite detailed in terms of the sequence, sequence of the construction and at the end of the operation lifetime that it's expected to be 100 years. <laughs> so we have this database, a very incomprehensive, let's say, finite element model database as a, a complement to the SHM database. Uh, in terms of comparison of the results, I would say in terms of the long-term performance, that's the main focus, we could see that uh, either the construction phase, uh, the loading test, and the long-term performance, the results uh, agree very well in terms of prediction against the, the model. Uh, but also, there is something that I, I had here, and this is also as a discussion from yesterday. Uh, the system is also able to, <coughs> to assess the behavior to the traffic loads. So we can see in the left uh, some measurements from strain gauges, and we can see some peaks due to traffic loads from this, and using a calibration model. We could use the data plus the finite model that we had to estimate the loads that are effectively crossing the bridge. So, based on statistics, we could fit a distribution. And from this, by using extreme power theory, we can estimate the different, let's say, extreme loads associated with different returning period of these loads. This work was done, it was assessed at the safety level of the <laughs> structure in terms of all the deflections. At the mid span here, in this span, for example, and we will see we observe that for this case <coughs> the limits were not exceeded. So, basically, just to show as well that we have these two dimensions of the problem uh, uh, covered not only the long term performance but also the short term performance in terms of lab loads. So, okay, it's just a brief uh, reference that there is a lot of papers on this case study, but for this. Case and that one is as a bottom line. Uh, I think that uh, it was very useful yesterday. So this is what was done in Munich, which again I repeat I appreciate uh, the support of Michael Farber, Daniel Strong, because they were the ones that uh, a lot of people <coughs> saw in this <laughs> these issues here. But from the last uh, meeting yesterday, uh, 
what I can, for example, in fact, uh, I'm seeing that in terms of, for example, characterization of likelihood functions, we can do it see, very easily for equipment shrinkage models and traffic load models because we have these already available. So from the data that we have from the ACGM system, we can in fact update the knowledge that we have from the codes to this site specific case, either in terms of long-term performance, equipment shrinkage, or the short term, because we can also have an instrument of defective loads. <coughs> um, it was also, and from Michael Fowler, something related that perhaps we could try to look more in terms of traffic delays or diverting the traffic due to this excessive deflection of metal core. Uh, and in this case, because it's a private company, it's not only minimizing cost of maintenance, but they have some tools on the bridge. So I need to clarify if this should be a minimization or a maximization, either costs or uh, benefit the profits from the tools. Uh, but in terms of performance, the, the one step that I'd like to go ahead <coughs> is that perhaps makes sense not only to include the long-term performance in terms of deflections due to equipment shrinkage and analyze this problem of excessive deflections, but with this work that I have already in traffic loads, <coughs> I could build also the coupled effect of this baseline, of which is the long-term performance, plus the traffic loads, which therefore I can use for servicing limit states, the combinations of Eurocore, and with these likelihood functions, we can say with and without ACGM, if we gain some benefit and understanding better what is the safety level and or the, <coughs> the extended period of life, it is possible more than or less than 100 years. Uh, in terms of indicators, I would say that uh, for this case, uh, it is possible to explore deflection at mid span sections due to this issue of the excessive deflections, but also due to the traffic loads, if I consider this in the model, the cracks on concrete mainly on the support sections, <laughs> which might be a critical issue, which we can derive it from this very refined finite element model. And in terms of remedial actions, also was something that uh, Michael suggested. We could also look, Michael, and not only Michael, I think Alan and uh, some other, that we could look more in terms of the first instance <coughs> as a first approach, perhaps is not to repair the bridge, but uh, if we start having a, a pattern of deflection that might affect the serviceability or the comfort of people traveling, we may think about uh, limit limiting the traffic speed and or the weight of the vehicles that cross the bridge. And all this can, in terms, <laughs> will be the impact in terms of costs or the benefits of the tools. Uh, and therefore, this is what I got from yesterday. So, thank you very much. I hope that that's. Uh, no, very right, right, right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, I'm leaving. So, are there any questions? Uh, yes, uh, I think, I don't think that you mean you want to see the normal uh, situation in which you have. Uh, you need a limitation on traffic because the... No, I have, a, I have already that traffic simulation made, so... The no, but I mean, yes, you are going to do this with a numerical model. I have already done. Okay, you are going to use the results of what you exactly. have already done yes. uh, to so uh, from model a future situation in which exactly, you need a traffic me. limitation. Yeah, so basically the idea is that, uh, as I present here, from the data that we collected from the string gauge of the high signal rate, this is a weak problem, so it's an inverse problem. I measure the response of the structure. And through the model, I can estimate the loss of that person of it. So I can estimate a reasonable next year one here. Let's say at least we believe that it's more uh, representative <coughs> these extreme loads that we are getting for this specific bridge. And therefore, when I assess the safety, in this case, this was a paper that uh, was published in 2016. It's only focusing on the traffic loads. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that, and based on the discussion of yesterday, perhaps it becomes easier to formulate this problem of other information, not only considering these excessive deflections just due to creep and shrinkage, but if you include the traffic load, <coughs> I think the reliability, reliability problem might become easier because you can use also the influence lines that can build an Instagram. And therefore, I have the response of the structure against the action of the structure. So I think it's it makes me more sense. But but to you, I think. And this likelihood function was estimated based on the data you have. Yes. Or yeah. So this creep and shrinkage deformations, we have the codes. There is some uncertainty. For example, 
it is <laughs> it is stated that the structure of these models is it has a coefficient of variation around 20 to 30 percent but i have data on the bridge from some <coughs> specimens so i can characterize the the uncertainty for this specific concrete on the bridge so i can update my paper shrinkage models from the with the posterior based on the Bayesian rule so and you also you started from a model from a field. And then you updated it based on the measurement. By applying based on the traffic load as well. For this, I didn't done yet. Yeah. So what I have is that with this paper that I did, I have the characterization of the traffic loads. So now I can took this histogram as a likelihood, combine it with a prior from the code, because in the codes you have in row code one, you have load model one, two, three, four. <coughs> I can understand better because Brisa has tools which is quite interesting because they record all the vehicles that cross the bridge. Therefore, we can, and they they don't wait, to, they, they don't don't uh, have the weight of the vehicles, but they have the class of vehicles. So it's two axles, three axles. Mm -hmm. So I make also update the load models from Eurocode for this specific use. So and therefore I have a prior, a likely, and I can have a posterior for the traffic simulation. Well, this is bumping to my head since yesterday, so don't ask me too much because <laughs> well you can ask <laughs> but okay. I, I, I may become a little bit too. <laughs> but what, what are the next steps when you know you with this this study so basically there is a lot of work in traffic load analysis so mm -hmm. it's one of the things that i'm also doing some research in the uk but there is i from my knowledge there is no such work that, that combines this deflection due to long-term performance mm -hmm. and the traffic loads and from a serviceability point of view if you look to the load combinations, it makes no sense because the load combinations for serviceability, it takes into account the contribution of the permanent loads plus live loads. Okay. So the permanent loads in this case, we perceive that it's mainly to dead loads and press threats, which are permanent loads. <laughs> but, but, but in principle, you would, so your, your uh, decision on the measurement is whether you uh, would use all your existing installations or not. Yes, right. so if and I then use then this information or yeah, not. Exactly. And then the, uh, then the risk you analyze is the risk, uh, uh, risk you calculate compared uh, based on the uh, design equations from the Eurocode. Yeah. So and basically, you compare the, 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 the risk this reduction you gain when you uh, use your refined model. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So basically, the other and, thing the, and the actions. The action should be the traffic loads. No, 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 no. Uh, the other actions. Uh, the, <laughs> actions <laughs> the, the, the actions you could do when ah, you next steps. What after what you found? Limit could the you traffic load? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, yeah. So the first thing that the I the I thought that uh, yeah. Michael also mentioned that that you should start with the uh, consider the perfect perfect information mm -hmm. without the pain. But I think also okay. to to build up this from the bottom to the up. The first action should be, I think it makes sense, if it starts having some discomfort in the child, to reduce traffic, the speed. Or if, yeah. some, if the safety is put in goals because we are starting also to see some cracks, mm -hmm. we perhaps also reduce the weight of the vehicles. Mm -hmm. If this goes to another level that is put in goals, not, not the safety, but uh, the serviceability le levels are not satisfied that might produce cracks in the long term, might mm -hmm. produce corrosion, and so Mm -hmm. Perhaps in that case, in that as the last case, you could try to repair the bridge, but how I don't know yet, because we discussed it yesterday that perhaps press stress is not, I know that is not mm -hmm. always the best solution because you're yeah. including more creep, more creep, more deflections, sure. but there are other people that are studying how to do this. Okay. Which is quite creep specific. Well, okay. Can I just ask you a quick question? Please. Oh. I think that's really interesting what you said at the very end, but looking at traffic loads and their influence on creep and shrinkage. Because there is no relation. Don't consider them. <laughs> so are you are you talking about a an equivalent quasi static load related to the traffic load? So saying that if it's a heavily trafficked structure, that based on the frequency of vehicles and the weight profile of vehicles, that there is an influence on creep due to the traffic load. Because so that would be really interesting if you could validate that. Well, uh, there are some. <laughs> just to close the <laughs> discussion, that would be incredible if you if you could. That. Yeah, that is a very point. Point. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can speak with you. There are some people that there are some people that say that uh, traffic does not affect creep. Yeah, but that's, that's an assumption. 
Yeah. There is a very famous person, like yeah. the Almighty God of Research. Yeah. I will not say the name, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he affirms and he gives some evidence that traffic laws does not affect well, if creep. Traffic but not, if traffic does affect creep, yeah, if you slow down the traffic, maybe you magnify the impact of the creep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. 